A 22 kilogram floodlight in a park is supported at the end of a uniform horizontal beam of mass 20 kilograms, a length of one meter that is hinged to a pole as shown in the figure below. A cable at an angle of 30 degrees with the beam helps to support said beam. Find the tension in the cable, find the horizontal and vertical components exerted on the beam by the hinge. Okay, so first thing to do, draw a picture. Picture's drawn, so easily accomplished. Now we're gonna draw, we're gonna convert this picture into a free body diagram. So I'm gonna start by drawing the forces on the beam. So this will be force, gravity, beam. Uh, this will be, actually I'm gonna draw this up on here, right there. This will be force, gravity, lamp. This will be force tension. This will be force pivot in the x direction. This will be force pivot in the y direction. And then I'm gonna break down, um, I'm gonna do it on this side, but I could draw it on this side as well. This is basically gonna be force tension in the y direction force tension in the x direction. I just broke down the um, x and y, the uh, force tension and x and y components. So it's not an actual new vectors that I've drawn on. There, you can look at the blue in, in lieu of, or in place of, the yellow force tension vector. It just makes things easier. All right, game face. So the, comp, the idea here is this beam isn't moving. So we're gonna do Newton's uh, second law, force equals ma, but specifically, we're gonna rewrite this in terms of sum of all forces in the x direction is zero, sum of all forces in the y direction, also zero, and since it's not rotating, we can do the um, rotational equivalent, the sum of all torques is moment of inertia times angular acceleration, but since it's not rotating, this is gonna equal zero as well. So we're gonna throw in one more third equation. Sum of all torques equals zero. Yes, seems reasonable. So at this point, it really isn't obvious where to go. We've drawn a picture, we've written formulas. Um, so now we're just gonna take some of the formulas we got, we have, we've written down, and we're just gonna expand for, for on it. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say the sum of all torques equals zero. And you can start with the other two first. It's just, you would end up getting too many unknowns in your equation and you'd end up, you wouldn't do anything wrong. It's just, this is the most productive route. It's like, how do you know that? It's challenging. After you do this enough times, like, okay, let's start with torque. So game face, focus. So for the torques, I'm gonna say that torque is equal to R cross F. So these are vectors, this is a cross product. Another way of saying this, torque without the vector, just the magnitude, is gonna be um, the perpendicular portion of R, which is the moment arm, times uh, F, or you can say the full radius, full distance, times F perpendicular. The idea is a cross product is a measure of how perpendicular two vectors are. And that's why we get um, this. Another way of saying this is RF sine of the sine. I think it's sine. Yep, because the sine of, and I'm going to say phi here, where phi is just the angle between R and F vectors. The idea is if the if the two vectors are perpendicular, the angle between them is 90 degrees, sine of 90 degrees is one, therefore the torque is maximized. All right, so this is what we're gonna use, and I am just going to say, since we have the sum of all torques equals zero, the torques clockwise, I'm gonna say minus the torques counterclockwise, the minus just means opposite direction, equals zero, and so I'm gonna say all the clockwise torques equals all the counterclockwise torques. Now, when people get serious about notation, um, they don't, torques aren't clockwise or counterclockwise, they're more into the, into the board, out of the board. Um, though that's technically accurate, and in many ways, 
better from an intuitive point of view, it's easy to think of them as clockwise or counterclockwise. So we're going to start by doing, let's say, um, counterclockwise. So Torx counterclockwise. The only thing that if we choose the hinge as the pivot point, now you can choose any point you want as your pivot point. I'm going to choose the hinge because you want to choose a pivot point where you're going to be able to cancel out the most torques possible. And what I mean by that is if you look at the pivot point, if we choose the hinge as the pivot point, we don't have to know the force on the pivots because their moment arm is zero because it's the same, it is the pivot point. So the distance to the pivot point is zero, therefore the torque is zero because torque is moment arm, R, radius, times force. So if R is zero, we can just like, neglect them and they don't they don't cause a torque. There, therefore, we're going to choose the pivot point as, at the hinge. That way it cancels out and it makes it easier to solve our equations. So torque counterclockwise using the hinge as the pivot. This is going to be uh, R, which I'm going to call this L length there. So it's going to be L cross F tension. So, but the thing is, we only want the perpendicular portion. So, what I'm going to do is going to be, I'm going to call this L times force tension in the y direction. Because force tension in the y direction is the perpendicular portion of the force, the perpendicular component. And when we look at torque, we can look at it as torque equals RF perpendicular. Only the perpendicular portion is what we're concerned with here. And using Sokotoa, uh, I'll do a triangle over here. Oh, triangle. This is force tension. This is force tension in the y direction. This is force tension in the x direction. And we'll do Sokotoa, which I should have written up first, though I failed to do so. And we're going to use, we have this angle right here, theta. So we're going to use sine. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, therefore, um, what do we want? Oh, equals, opposite in this case is force tension, y, hypotenuse is force tension, therefore force tension times sine of theta equals force tension y. So what we did is we just found a an equivalent value for force tension y, the perpendicular portion of the force. So it's going to be L times force tension sine of theta. And this is going to be our torque counterclockwise. I know that C right there is comically bad. So torque counterclockwise. And this is going to be our completed torque counterclockwise because we only have one force here that's going to cause this pivot point to rotate counterclockwise. So now Let's look at torque in the clockwise direction. So I'm going to come down here, uh, get a different color, because right, I'm purple. Let's do light blue. Torque clockwise. So we're going to have two forces going clockwise, uh, causing rotational torque clockwise. So we're going to do the first one, the torque is going to be the distance, L over 2, times force gravity beam. That's supposed to be force gravity beam plus L due to force gravity light. There we go. And we're going to expand these a little bit. So this is going to be L over 2. Force of gravity is mass times gravity. It's going to be mass of beam times gravity plus L mass of light also times gravity. We're going to do some math and factor out both the L and the G. And this gives us times mass beam over 2 plus mass lamp. And now we have an equation for the torque clockwise. So we have torque clockwise, torque counterclockwise. We know they're equal and opposite because they cancel out and equal to 0. So at this point, we can just say torque clockwise, which is LG MB over 2 plus ML mass lamp or light if you prefer, L force tension sine of theta 
So I think this is all we need right now. We're looking for force tension. So one thing we can do is we can cancel out the length. Turns out the length of this beam is irrelevant since everything is written in terms of the length. And we're then left with um, G mass beam over two plus mass of the light all over sine of theta. But we know that theta is 30 degrees. So putting some numbers in here, we'll do 9.8 times mass of the beam. I think the beam was 20. Yep, the beam was 20, the light's 22. So this is gonna be 20 over two plus 22 all over sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees is one half, so we have 9.8. Uh, 20 over two is 10, 10 plus 22 is 32, 32 over 0.5. And this is going to be, um, I'm gonna do 9.8 times 64, because dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two. Go to calculator, calculator, oh, move calculator someplace visible. 9.8 times 64, and we get 627.2. 627.2, and that's going to be Newtons. So our tension in the cable is gonna be 627.2 Newtons as the unit. So now we wanna find the horizontal and vertical components exerted on the beam by the hinge. All right, so exact same concept. We're now going to do, um, let's do X first. Yeah, horizontal X. So I'm gonna call this part B. Hoop. The sum of all forces in the X direction equals zero. Another way to think of this is all the lefts equal all the rights. So looking at it from that point of view, which is mathematically similar, I'm gonna say that all the left values is force tension X is to the left, and that's gonna equal force pivot X, because those are the only two that we have. Uh, we know that force tension X, so doing uh, Sokoto again, we do um, back to our triangle over here, force tension X, We'd say that cosine of theta, that's supposed to be a theta, equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And adjacent is force tension in the x direction. Hypotenuse is force tension, which we know. So when we rearrange this, we get force tension cosine theta equals force tension in the x direction. So that's what we're gonna use for force tension in the x, is force tension cosine theta. So force pivot in the x direction, it's gonna be force tension cosine, uh, I'll say theta. So then we have 627.2 times cosine of 30 degrees. If I was a better person, I could do that in my head, but I am not. We're gonna to go to mode, we're already in degrees, convenient. So we'll do 627.2 times cosine 30 degrees, uh, we'll do 543, 543 newtons. So the horizontal force, 543 newtons. All right, so that's B, I'll say B part one, B, B part two. We now wanna find the um, vertical component, so force pivot Y. So now, same concept, except now we're gonna do the sum of all forces in the y direction. We're gonna set that equal to zero. So looking at all the forces going up, we have force pivot y. I know my handwriting is terrible and I'm so zoomed out. Force pivot y plus force tension y, which we already found. And that's gonna equal force gravity beam plus force gravity light. Let's see, is that, do we only have four? So one, two going down, two going up. Yep. And I'm not entirely sure that the force pivot's going up. I assume it is. <laughs> but um, if for some reason it turns out to be negative, I'll just get a negative answer and I'll know if my arrow was drawn the wrong direction.
So there's a lot of things that, that cause me stress in life. That is not one of them. All right, this, that. All right, I think we got this. So now we want to solve for force pivot y. Solving this, we get force pivot y equals force gravity beam, which is going to be mass of the beam times gravity. Now, before we had to divide it by 2, but that's because we took the um, center of mass to be, that had to do with the torque. So there's no dividing by 2 here, just the, the force of the beam going straight down, mass of the beam times gravity, plus mass of um, the light, again, times gravity, minus force tension y, which we already solved for, I believe. So this is going to be gravity, 9.8, times 20, which is the mass of the beam, plus 22, which is the mass of the light, minus force tension y, which I think it over here, we said was 627.2, 627.2 times the sine of 30 degrees, which I'm just going to write as one half because I can. Yep, that seems plausible. Let's see if this gives us a positive answer. If it gives us a negative answer, I'm going to start questioning things. So 20 plus 22 is 42. I'm just going to put that in as 42. I'm going to subtract 627.2 divided by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half. That seems plausible. Yep, and I get an answer of 98. 98 newtons. So the force pivot in the y direction is uh, 98 newtons, and that's going to be up because this sign basically means that it's going to be the same direction that I chose the arrow to be, which is up. So if I got a negative value, it means that my arrow had to be flipped. So long story short, we went over a lot there, and I went over probably faster than I should have, but such is life. Um, the idea here is Newton's second law. So we said sum of all, since it's not moving, we say the sum of all forces in the x and y direction are zero, which means all the ups equal all the downs. But then we also have torque, which means that all the torques causing clockwise motion are going to equal all the torque causing counterclockwise motion. I think that was actually backwards. That's okay. You get the idea. Um, no acceleration linearly, no acceleration rotationally. Newton's second law applies to both linear and rotational. So then that gave us some equations. We just started plugging in numbers and we took all the data, shook it up in a box, looked inside the box, and we had answers. And for some reason we didn't have answers, we just shake it up some more. There is no perfect way to go through these equations and to really know it ahead of time. Um, it's just kind of like walking into the woods where you take the formulas you have, you draw your pictures, you write your formulas, and then you work with your formulas and you try to work towards your goal, but you're right, it's difficult. There's no, there's not always a clear path there. So that's how I'd approach this problem. Hope it helped. See you next time.